Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make beef stew. Now, I don't know if you can kind of tell by my voice, but I'm feeling a little under the weather today. I haven't been feeling so good the past few days, so I needed to make myself something that was just comforting. I could eat it pretty much for the next two to three days, keep it in the fridge and just keep reheating it. It's going to like, you know, nurse me back to health. So before we get started, let's go over the ingredients. You're gonna need some stewing meat, and I'm just choosing to use a chuck roast for this. I think it works best, but you can use whatever you like. What I've got here is an array of vegetables. I've got some carrots, onions, potatoes, celery, uh, and a little bit of fresh garlic. And I just peel them, wash them, cut them into large chunks. I like my veggies to be the same size as my meat, but that's up to you. I've got some beef broth, some frozen peas that I have defrosting, a little bit of red wine, some tomato paste, fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, some dried bay leaves, a little all-purpose flour. You're going to need olive oil, salt, and pepper. Those are your ingredients. Now, a stew is very different than, to say, you know, baking. A stew, you can do whatever you want. You can put whatever you want in it. So if you don't like to use the wine, don't use the wine. Put in a little bit of extra stock. Um, if you don't like as many veggies as I do, put in a little bit less. You know, it's a stew. You know, do what you want. You're the boss. Now, what I've got here is a few tablespoons of olive oil, and I've got this going over high heat. Now, this is so important because a big, big part of what's going to give us a lot of flavor is that we are actually going to caramelize the meat. We're going to brown it really well on all sides, and we're going to do that by making sure we have gotten the olive oil really nice and hot. So I'm just going to wait a couple seconds because I don't think it's hot enough. I'm, I want it to smoke a little bit. Add some of the rice in. Now, really important, I'm going to season it with salt and pepper. And then I'm going to let this cook for about five to seven minutes. I want all sides to be really dark caramelized. So, to do that, cook it for however long it takes until it's all browned. My meat is nicely browned, and I'm just taking it out of the pan here. And I'm going to leave in all those remaining meaty juices. Now, if you want, you can drain them and then just add some fresh olive oil, but I don't want, I don't like to do that because there's so much. He didn't want to be a part of this party, so he flew away. Oh, well. See, I don't think that draining that makes sense because there's so much flavor in there and I'm going to use that. So I am. So to this, I'm going to add in all of my veggies carefully so they don't go overboard. Whoa. Just like that. And then I'm going to season these with salt and a little pepper. By seasoning every element of the dish, it comes out really well rounded. Give that a nice grate of black pepper. And I'm going to let these cook for about five minutes or so, or until they start to develop some color. And that's what you're looking for when it comes to your veggies. Now, to this, you need to add in some flour because you need to develop a thickening agent so that your beef soup is stew and not soup. So I'm going to sprinkle in some flour, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir constantly for about two minutes or until I've cooked out that raw flour taste. And after that, we're going to add in some red wine, and I'm going to just give this a good stir, scrape off any bottom, uh, the bottom of any brown bits because that's all good flavor, and then you're just going to let it reduce for a minute. Add in your tomato paste. Just give that a stir. And at this point, we're going to put in, oops, we're going to put in your beef stock. And make sure that when you buy beef stock at the store, you buy one that's reduced sodium or low sodium because you don't want any excess, you know, a lot of salt that's going to overpower your dish and then you're going to end up having to throw the whole thing away. And then you're going to put in your herbs. And for the bay leaves, you can use fresh or dry, whatever you've got. I always have dry on hand, so I choose to use the dry. And now you're going to just bring this up to a boil, and then we'll put in the meat. You just want to slide your brown meat right back in. Give it a stir. You put your lid on, turn it down to low, and let it cook for two and a half hours. And then just kind of, you know, check on it, give it a little TLC. But for two and a half hours, you are a free woman. My beef stew cooked for about two and a half hours, covered on low. Now I took the lid off, turned the heat up to about medium high. Now I'm going to add in my peas that I've been defrosting so they're nice and tender. And they're only going to need about three minutes just to warm all the way through. And this is the perfect time for you to taste it and adjust the seasoning and give it of the bay leaves because they never get soft. 
So just let it cook for a couple minutes and then we'll serve it up. It's looking good. I'm just gonna turn it off. I mean, that smells like you would not believe how good that smells. It's amazing. It's really thick. It's got good color. It's what beef stew should be. And you can just lay, look at that. It's perfect. I don't like when beef stew has got a lot of liquid because then it's beef soup, not beef stew. I'll give this a taste. I'm going to get a piece of the meat and some of the sauce. Mmm, that's good. If that's not going to nurse me back to health, then nothing else can. And like I said, you can put this, what I do, I mean, it's my husband and I, and this is a big part of it. So what I do is I take it, and I, serve, and I put it into like a freezer safe Ziploc bags, and I portion it out for two people. Put them in the freezer, that way if it's like the middle of the week and you don't have time to make dinner, or you're craving something that takes a long time to cook, but you just don't have the time, you have it like in portions, and then you can defrost it in like minutes. That's it. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Go to www.laurainthekitchen.com to get the recipe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.